I run the Flow Suite uh, for the Wellcome Trust MRC Stem Cell Institute at uh, Cambridge University. My facility is quite busy and what I was asked to do was, was extend the kind of science we do. So they want to know more detail about resolution of the system and the ability to sort less numbers of molecules, smaller numbers of molecule differences. If I'm to spend time to, to try and improve the resolution of the instrument, then I need some time and, uh, and uh, space away from the general running operating instrumentation in order to do that. And so we were looking at having something take some of the work away from me so I can concentrate down on this. And the S3 was a good fit. Training on the SD is kind of important in terms of efficiency, so I always look at the weight of the manual uh, compared to the amount of time I've got to go to sift through it. And the manual for it is actually a bit verbose because it, all it needs is pictures and a big pointy finger. And it is quite straightforward to use. If you've used an analyzer, then you can use this S3, it's quite simple. The training, I spend maybe 10 minutes training people just to give them the extensions to the software. Everything else is worked out. So a lot of work then goes to self-use. It's extended the day and now weekends become available and night, midnights and very, very late at night becomes available. But I'm not the principal uh, linchpin. When I go away, the facility is still turning over without me, which is always good. And it allows me, frees me up to go try and understand the systems more and then use that as leverage against an assay so I can improve it and make it higher in resolution. When you're talking about resolution, you're talking about a signal, essentially. And with the signal, when you use a, a, a flow cytometer, you get a lot of background noise. And so if you have a signal that's weak, uh, what you're wanting to do is get either have lots of the signal in the, the system or you can recycle what signal you have over and over again. So the idea is simple. You have a cell and it goes through the laser beam and what you want to do is hit it with a photon. The electron and the fluorochrome goes up, hangs about, comes back down. This is a lifetime of the dye. You want another photon straight in behind that to push it back up again and so on and so forth. And so as, this, as the fluorochrome goes through, it's constantly getting recycled as it tries, traverses through the laser beam. And then you collect all that light. So instead of having one molecule of fluorescence giving you one photon out as it goes through the laser beam, it can give you a hundred photons or ten molecules will give you a thousand, which is better than just ten. So from a set of equations that I developed, I can work out what the uh, saturation is of the fluorochrome. And from that, I can reutilize more and more of these fluorochromes. On one system, you may see only five peaks of this distribution. On my system, you can see many, many more peaks. And the reason for that is, is because of the energy that, that gets put in and the saturation that gets put in. Since we had the S3, I've had more opportunities to address these central questions that the scientists are, are asking of my facility, these resolution differences, so I'm getting more involved in the, the scientific output rather than just providing an end product for them, which is good for me and good for my career. Yeah. The downside of that is you tend to be a victim of your own success, so the more people move to the S3, the more people come the other way as well because the capabilities are there. So you end up in this, this position. It, it, it cures it for a short <laughs> amount of time until the next problem, but they're good problems to have. The, your, your lab use is always good if it's popular. So that's good. It's a good problem.